Welcome to Original Mind Zen Sangha. Today's Dharma talk is given by Andre Tesan Hallo. Welcome, everybody. Uh, tonight's talk is going to be called When Things Don't Change. And I'm uh, toying with the title of a very famous book, about a Buddhist practice um, by Pema Chodron, entitled When Things Fall Apart. And I believe she borrowed that from, oh goodness, Yates, maybe? Anyhow, um, our practice is, is largely concerned with accepting the impermanent nature of life, that everything is shifting and changing, and nothing's fixed. And yet, um, if I find lately the most challenging aspect of my own practice is accepting those things that refuse to change or those people who refuse to change. Even though from moment to moment, we're not the same person and uh, clearly we grow even when we don't want to and our viewpoints change in some cases, some things just refuse to. It's like if you ever dug a hole and uh, you have to plant something here, or maybe you're trying to, I don't know, snake a wire through the ground or some plumbing, and there's that root, that stubborn root who just will not bend to your will, and it, it won't move. You can, you can try to bend it, twist it, saw it even sometimes usually it's in the most um, um inconvenient of locations so it won't allow for any of that, that that kind of funny business with tools and it just it haunts us and we wonder okay well what am i doing that's clearly wrong here because life shouldn't be doesn't feel like it should be this challenging so like i'm carrying a boulder up a hill um but when we live in a world, a social world, where we, we can't make decisions entirely for ourselves, and at best, we, we might trust those elected officials. I didn't say we elected them. Those elected officials who govern us, uh, and what do we do when, they're, when their obstinance is so great? They that defy the basic tenet of Buddhism, which is that everything is subject to change. They won't change in the face of truth, in the face of reason. I'm talking about larger issue, large issues here like racism, prejudice, discrimination, sexism. Just human ignorance. I can't blame the root. The root's doing what a root's supposed to do, just grow and stay strong and maintain the integrity of the plant. But humans hold on to things with such tenacity that I don't know if it's admirable or condemnable, contemptible, I suppose. Because so much of the grief in this world is, is just the product of Human obstinance, the refusal to, to admit that when we're wrong and therefore to change. And I think that we're confronted with, a, with that very often. Maybe it's more glaring now to me, given the current political climate, at least here in the United States, events surrounding this pandemic, And I find myself and my wife who, who, who practices her own form of Zen, but doesn't call it Zen at all, and does not um, consider herself a Buddhist at all. Our practice, our collective practice as parents, as citizens, is how do we accept that which we cannot change and that which refuses to change? Like, like any experience in life, this, or like some experiences can be, this amounts to um, a moment with no resolution. 
there's no way to solve this necessarily. Sometimes there might be, you might be able to have a conversation with somebody and have them change their mind. But more often than not, I find our practice consists of just accepting our inability to change that which we think needs changing. Sometimes that applies to ourselves. Oh, I need to stop eating as much. I need to, I need to exercise more. And I just don't feel the ability to change my behavior. I'm caught in that pattern of samsara. Just, just blown around by these karmic tendencies and habits. Uh, just as often though, I, I think that it can apply to what we can't change in the world. There's that root. What is the root for you? Mm-hmm. Is, it, is it a thoughtless employer? or uh, a policy which can be even more more frustrating because it's a faceless thing it's a force but it, it doesn't have an identity something that we can reason with policy laws that are unfair discriminatory and so we dance this narrow um razor's edge as we have to and try to embody the wisdom of making the right act, right decision. So do do we sit passively, which sometimes may be the right choice, or do we take action? And sometimes that's the right choice or the wrong one. We don't know unless we look deep inside of ourselves and I suppose try to find the heart of the matter both as an event and inside of ourselves and how we feel about it. What must I do? And it's not an easy question. Uh, It certainly is not an easy process. And uh, we're confronted with a new one. We can be confronted with a new one every day. Just as we we overcome what what feels like a hurdle, we are confronted with a host of other ones. And it's like, welcome to planet earth, you're human. And yet as bodhisattvas, we, we never abandon our task of trying to ease other people's suffering. Do we, do we take that to mean that we save them, that we help them, we give them a loaf of bread? To quote my teacher, we do what we can. And unfortunately that isn't enough at times. So how do we accept our own failure is just as much about this practice as it is about growing and transforming. It's accepting that empty loneliness to know that we, that, that it it takes infinite amount of lifetimes to help all these, these sentient beings. But of course, we can't do it any time but now. And life is filled with paradoxes and ironies. And although the, the cornerstone of the Buddhist teaching is to concentrate and thrive inside of that groundless ground of change. I think just as much our practice could be about confronting, learning how to accept those moments, those instances where things don't change. They're not permanent, but they're not changing. Thank you.